that's enough. We have Vadim here. Um, Vadim, thank you so, so much for uh, flying in. And uh, we very, very much look forward to your foresight challenge. Thank you. <clears throat> so I've been thinking what to tell you because there are so many challenges and many challenges we work in the lab. So it's actually hard to choose one. Uh, and all the challenges presented today was great and, and I'm looking forward to the next one. So what I'm going to present is the challenge which I think is the most important, um, the most critical to everything that we do in our field. And I think without it, uh, the field cannot really move forward effectively at least. Uh, so on a micro scale, it prevents us from uh, talking to each other, interacting to each other, finding common language. And the macro scale, it precludes us from speaking um, in a unified force to other people. For example, um, promoting moonlight projects or uh, just grabbing attention of society and journalists and so on. But the problem is that nobody wants to work on it and discuss it openly. It's a kind of unspoken challenge. Some people think that they have solved it already. They know the answer. And some people don't know how to address it at all. Uh, nine years ago, this paper was published called Diversity of Aging Across the Tree of Life. And uh, this basically looks at uh, mortality patterns uh, in, uh, across the species. So you can see here a human uh, pattern. Red is uh, mortality, so some people, you know, when they're young, they don't die. Eventually, you know, when they're old, they die. And this is a reproduction. So, uh, you know, that's how people reproduce, and then kind of reproduction kind of drops, and, 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 and that's it, yeah? And then if you look at other species, it's more or less the same patterns. But then when we look across species more broadly, we find um, the patterns are very strange, uh, very different patterns. For example, if you look at uh, this row, second from the bottom, you can see um, this one, it's a hydra. Hydra, mortality does not change with age and reproduction also does not change with age. And if you look at other species on, on, the, on the bottom here, you can see uh, even more stranger patterns that actually uh, mortality drops with age. So organisms kind of chronologically age but mortality is decreased and reproduction increases. So um, on the kind of green, like the, for example, the, the, the box on the very right uh, bottom corner, green and some other greens, they are trees. So if you look at the trees, we ask a question. Which tree is older? Is it this tree or that tree? So you, know, you might say, well, maybe this is an old, older tree. Yeah? But if we look at the mortality patterns and fecundity reduction, it's the opposite. Yeah? So this tree is less likely to die and more likely it has higher fitness because it produces more uh, fruit. So it kind of goes against evolutionary theories because we are thinking about uh, evolution in terms of the aging patterns. Yeah? Uh, thinking cypriotropy, uh, mutation accumulation and you know, various other disposable soma. It just, um, it's a paradox, it just does not work. Yeah? So there are lots of aging theories that we have plenty of theories. Some people say that we have more theories than people in the field. So, and uh, you know, I'm sure everybody here you know, has their own uh, theories. I know Yuri Smiling, he's a programmed uh, aging guy, yeah. <laughs> I'm, you know, here. Uh, and there's other people here in various. We, we think differently about aging. So the question is, we have theories of what? What is aging? So is it increased mortality rate? Is it decreased fitness? Or functional decline? Or continuation of development? Or age-related changes? Or increased biological age? Damage accumulation? And there's a paper was published, there's no such thing as aging. Yeah? So if I ask you questions, you will answer it differently, I know, because I've been asking people. So we kind of think, everybody of us think we know what we are working on, but we just think differently about it. And if we don't define it, if we don't find consensus, I don't think we can move forward. Because we don't know what we are working on, what is our enemy, what we are fighting against. 
The same thing for uh, rejuvenation. If you ask what is rejuvenation, exactly the same thing. Some people think, okay, it uh, must be a decreased mortality rate or increased fitness or functional gain or transition to a kind of early developmental stage or um, changes in, in opposite to age-related changes or maybe decreased biological age, if, for example, if you use some clocks or de damage depletion. And some people say it's not possible to rejuvenate organisms. It's exactly like in the aging uh, kind of yeah, same problems. So this is my challenge. We need to define aging and rejuvenation. We really need it. And I think everything else depends on it in the field. So if we think, we think different ways about aging, increased mortality rate, whatever, but if we kind of define it, then, then we have our challenges. For each of those, there are some challenges. But before we address these challenges, and I was thinking that I would present the challenge, and that's why I decided to give you <laughs> such as the a biggest challenge of all, is it because all other challenges will follow. We just need to find this, define it, what we are working on. So what do we need? Uh, I think the main thing we need to develop consensus on fundamental aspects of aging. We need to define what is aging, what is the cause of aging, what is biological age, because we, we mean it in different ways, all of us. We need to design experiments that could distinguish between various models of aging. Determine what exactly we're trying to slow down or reverse. I also think that we need to place more focus on periods that distinguish various models of aging, for example, in the younger age, because after the age of 30, everything goes down the hill. So mortality increases, uh, you know, function decreases, damage accumulates. We cannot really distinguish very well between various patterns. But once we look at the younger ages, suddenly we can. Um, I'm looking at Leon. I, one, once I gave a uh, talk in his department, there was a like a theory lunch, you have to draw like patterns. And I was uh, drawing this, and and there was Walter Fontana. He's a uh, um, scaling scaling uh, in C elegance. Um, was sitting and I asked a question: Who is older, one year old child or three year old child? And he says, Well, the three year old child is less likely to die, less likely to develop cancer, less likely to develop diabetes, less likely to develop heart disease. Um, of course, this person is younger. But I say it makes no sense. And the three oldest is older than one year old. But based on this all these evolutionary theories, it's not. And and then I, I when I ask people, evolutionary biologists, they say, no, we cannot discuss younger age. This not this is not aging. This is just development. And they say, how about we compare 20 and 25 year old person? And they say, no, we cannot discuss because it's hormones. You know, males, you know, they are you know, there are hormones, they have risky behavior, they die more often than 20 year old 20 years than 25, therefore we cannot discuss that. And then we published this paper on the Nick Morad. Mortality does not decrease with age, but the biological age increases based on methylation clocks. And they say, no, we cannot discuss uh, Nick Morad. And then what is left? What is left is this period in some species between 30 and, and, da, and, and, da, and that's the only period that left. But why? Maybe mortality is just a bad representation of aging. Maybe it's bad. And all evolutionary theories are based on that. So we need to address this. So Cicero here wrote this more than 2,000 years ago. Physicians, when the cause of disease is discovered, consider that the cure is discovered. Let's do this for aging and stop being aging alchemists. Thank you. The reason I present this is because we have uh, lots of smart people here. We could organize a group and design. Of course, I have my own opinion, but I, I want other people kind of to contribute and kind of discuss, and maybe we can jointly think about it. So just wanted to bring your attention to something that happens in neuroscience. There's the same kind of problem. There's consciousness, and no one can define it. And people try to study it, and they cannot. And then philosophers come, and those people know how to ask questions. And the first thing they found was about consciousness, you have two types of questions, easy and hard questions. Hard questions, the ones that you cannot answer by the scientific method. What is the experience of being about? Easy questions, anything that you can do science about. So 
is there anything in aging that is similar to those easy and hard questions? Is the part in aging that we cannot address by sex? Uh, I don't know. Science is like this. We can never say no uh, if we, uh, uh, you know, maybe we don't know how to address this challenge, but in the future we can. I mean, in the history of science, we had m many examples, yeah, of and, that. And, and aging is an easy question. If it's available to, to science, it's an easy question. Well, I don't know if it's easy or not, but we're all here are trying to work on it, yeah? We're all working to slow down or reverse to some targeted, yeah? It's just, <laughs> we think in different ways. So I think it would be useful for us to, to define it uh, somehow, because our experiments would, would differ depending on how we uh, define it, yeah? So the analogous version to consciousness, um, in this case, I think, would be uh, aging is when your, your body is becoming more like that state where you say to yourself, I'm too old. Which is, which is not amenable because vitality is a complex, it's, a complex. it's an idea that we have, that we experience to a greater or smaller degree, but that you can't put your finger on or quantify in at least an easy way without some intermediary. So, so one thing that a part of this, right, is that argued about all the time is aging and disease is all, are all diseases and aging. So if, if you go back to that slide where you have all the funky survival curves, is if you overlay cause of death on there, can you start to get at why they look like this? Is this just a function of different cause of death? Like the human one, for example, that human survival curve looks a lot like Alzheimer's disease. Right? Like Alzheimer's disease risk, it has the same shape, right? So is everybody dying of Alzheimer's? versus some other species is dying of infectious disease when they're younger or being gobbled up. So can you start to explain this? Well, yeah, we, we can we can try, but uh, I mean this would kind of change in minor ways. But w what I'm trying to say here is just completely uh, different patterns. Yeah, it's just uh, and and the aging of a is a disease is, uh, is another kind of valid question, uh, uh, and uh, there is an al also dispute in the field and debates on, on that. People disagree, but I think it's a kind of a secondary question. So right. because because it's difficult to divide, design uh, uh, define both aging and disease. But, but I'm just thinking mathematically, if, if these patterns can't, if, if all of survival can be explained by a moderating variable, which is disease, then that starts to answer this question, right? Is if, if what we're interested in is extending years of life, and years of life is all dependent on disease, which I would imagine very few people, you don't just die of old age, right? That's, you die of something. So, so I'm, I'm just saying this is like one way to start getting at it, right? Is to figure out what is causing the mortality. Well, mortality may be caused by many factors. Yeah, for example, an organism is small; it can be eaten, becomes bigger, and less like less prone to predation. Yeah, and therefore it would change mortality immediately, or some kind of, you know. An organism becomes a little older, but kind of protected somehow. There is a stronger cell wall or some kind of other protective systems, and and, and again, so maybe maybe less infected. So so there there is all kinds of different patterns here. Yeah, what, what I'm what I'm trying to say that mortality is often well sometimes often not a good representation, but that's our main tool. So we look at uh, mortality in all of our systems. For example, like in mice, we have a project in mice. Uh, and most lab mice die of B-cell lymphoma. Yeah, so if, uh, if you de develop an intervention that um, kind of takes care of it and lifespan will be extended without changing uh, kind of biological aging of, of the mice, yeah? And again, so very few people work, actually almost nobody works on that. Everybody pick ups, picks up some kind of um, a unique model system, but on this major cause of, of aging in mice, nobody works on it. Isn't that amazing? Right. I mean, all, all of the mouse studies are basically cancer studies. Okay. One oh, last one. To complicate this diagram even further, none of the organisms that die after mating are on here. So that would be very interesting. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
they, they are probably not, but I haven't checked all of them. I mean, it's not my paper. Yeah. No, no, I'm just throwing it out there just because, you know, it's a thing that happens in nature. It's like, why? Right? Okay. So I have a question, a oh, great question. What is aging? What is uh, uh, rejuvenation? Uh, we have hallmarks of aging. Why not make uh, hallmarks of theories of aging? Many of them did very, very well. And uh, I think that many of them are not exactly conflicting. So you, if you want the unified theory of aging, you need to create hallmarks of theory of aging. Interesting, interesting idea, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there have been a few papers trying to do that, actually. Yeah. Okay, well, then we at least have um, now a way to make progress in working groups if people want to pick their challenge.